Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. We are, this is a great day for South Carolina. We again have on display our, our great strength and great promise. We, are, we have a strong military tradition. It is personified in the, the Citadel, which was created in 1842 by legislative act, along with the Arsenal Academy, which is gone now. The mansion remains as a part of that. But our military tradition goes all, back all the way to the beginning, 1670, and is in, in full bloom now. And we are, our National Guard, Air and National Guard, are ranked repeatedly as number one in readiness in the United States, which means we're ready to go, ready to fight, ready to defend this country. And we have two great leaders of that with us today. And the first will be the Adjutant General who is preparing to leave this strong office, and that is General Robert Livingston. General? Thank you, Governor. Governor, I want to thank you and the Lieutenant Governor and uh, all of South Carolina for the privilege of serving as the head of your military. Uh, Governor, you are right. Uh, not, not only are we the best in the United States, we're best in the world. And uh, we're very proud of that, very proud of our great men and women. Uh, today, uh, our men and women are serving in combat. Uh, they're prepared to serve this state, and we're prepared to uh, serve with our partners down in the country of Columbia and our partners throughout the world. Uh, and I'm just so proud of our organization. I'm, I'm proud of the governor's selection uh, for the new adjutant, and uh, look forward to uh, great things on that end. Uh, I'm also uh, very thankful and proud of our families. And uh, I know uh, Barbara is standing over there along with uh, Van's wife, Susan. Uh, our families are why we do what we do, and they're also our strength. And uh, I just want to say thank you uh, to our families, uh, thank you to the great men and women of the South Carolina National Guard, and to all of Team South Carolina, headed up by our great governor, uh, Governor McMaster. Governor, thank, thank you, you so General. much. Thank you, General. Van McCarty is, is quite a man and quite a soldier. I will not attempt to read all of this, but I must read some of it because it is strong and you need, need to know. As you know, Van McCarty serves now as a deputy, deputy adjutant general. General Livingston has been in that position as an elected adjutant general for eight years now with great distinction and also performing so well, both of these men, as you know, in the, in the hurricanes and storms and floods that we've had. General McCarty oversees the administrative activities and daily operations of the organization now. In his federal capacity, he serves as the Assistant Adjutant General responsible for monitoring unit readiness to include strength, equipment, and training. The General, the Major General, both Major Generals, a native of South Carolina, he attended the Citadel, graduate in 1982 with the United States Army Reserve Commission in Field Artillery. And then went on, and during that time, of course, the, the uh, reserves is reserved is part time. But he worked as a sled agent or department. I was DNR, agent. sir, and my former boss is standing here in the office today. All right. For 36 years, he's commanded units at every echelon from battery to brigade. He holds a bachelor of science degree, as I mentioned, from the Citadel. He's field artillery officer, basic and advanced courses, combined arms and services staff school, U.S. Army Command and General Staff College, air defense artillery, transition course, joint task force commander course, U.S. Army Senior Service College, capstone, and the advanced Army strategic education program. Wards and decorations include, but are not limited to, the Legion of Merit, the Bronze Star with one Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster, the Meritorious Service Medal with one Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster, the Army Commendation Medal. I'm going to leave out all the clusters because they're too many, but all of these have various clusters associated with them. The Army Achievement Medal, the Army Reserve Components Achievement Medal, the National Defense Service Medal, the Afghanistan Campaign Medal with Bronze Star, the Iraqi Campaign Medal with a Bronze Star, 
the Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, Humanitarian Service Medal, the Armed Services Reserve Medal with silver or hourglass device, the Army Service Ribbons, Overseas Service Ribbon with second award, the NATO Medal, South Carolina Meritorious Service Medal, South Carolina Active State Services Medal with one silver star, the South Carolina Achievement Ribbon, and the South Carolina Mobilization Ribbon. This is an experienced soldier. He's been in combat overseas. He's served his country well. He serves our state well. And I appreciate deeply the help and guidance I received from General Livingston in making this selection, which with he, he presented me with all of the qualified officers in the National Guard. And the qualifications are strenuous, as you have noticed, but also those who were interested and after a, a thorough uh, review, uh, it is clear that the man to lead our National Guard at this time is General McCarty. Van McCarty, come forward, please, sir. Thanks, sir. Yes, sir. All right. uh, Governor, Lieutenant Governor, I am humbled, pleased, and excited about this opportunity, sir, that you have uh, appointed me to serve in the, as the Adjutant General of the great state of South Carolina. I really uh, enjoy soldiering. I enjoy being with our soldiers, airmen, and all the employees of the military department of South Carolina that allow us each day to do the great things that we do for this state and for this nation. Our business is important, and it's nothing that I can do that's any more than important to, than to ensure that our soldiers and airmen are trained, equipped, and ready to perform their federal mission, their state mission, or whatever they may be asked to do. And I look out across our ranks today and I see young soldiers, I see young airmen that are excited about the opportunity to serve this great nation and this great state. They're a little bit different generation, but they step up and meet the challenge just as our forefathers have done before. Uh, Susan and I are honored to have this opportunity. Uh, we will give it everything that we have to ensure that our young men and women in the state of South Carolina are well represented. And I look forward to the challenges and the opportunities that we have. Uh, the commander that I had years ago, he would chastise you if you came in and said, you had a problem. He said, you have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to accomplish something great. And I look at this as an opportunity to move forward from the great foundation that Major General Livingston and his team have made in putting this great organization together and to see where we can take it going forward. And I'm privileged and humbled to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Yes, sir. What do you see as the uh, biggest I believe it's, it is today what it was yesterday, and that is the strength of our force. We've got to recruit and we've got to retain the best and the brightest young men and women that we can. Uh, there are plenty of challenges in this world today, both at home and abroad, so we will continue to reach out to try to recruit and retain the best soldiers. Uh, we consistently rank in the top five in the nation of, of our strength, but it is a challenge and we, though we work to meet that challenge each and every day. Uh, we have about 9,300 Army and about 1,200 Air National Guard. More questions? In that case, let's bring out the board. We're seeing all sorts of talk again about consolidation, Third Army moving down to Shaw, that sort of thing. Where do you see McIntyre and the entire the combined Guard base going forward with all that talk? Uh, we work each and every day to ensure that the force structure in the state of South Carolina is stable and that we have an opportunity to grow it where, uh, the, where there's a chance to do so. South Carolina was ranked by National Guard Bureau last year as what they call a green state. We have the ability to grow additional force structure in South Carolina on the Army side. We're very confident that our Air Guard is, is equally capable of accepting new challenges, potentially new force structure. We're posturing to ensure that we're in a position to accept either the F-35 or the next future 
generation fighter. Uh, we will do all that we can to ensure the relevant support of uh, McCready Training Center and McIntyre as we go forward. Uh, we will, but a big part of that is ensuring our strength. How many, how many uh, bases or institutions do you manage now in the state? <coughs> I'm sorry, the basic uh, we have about 75 facilities statewide, and we have uh, facilities in 41 of the 46 counties in the state. You know, the hub is um, either at McIntyre, where our, most of our Army equipment is kept, that, it, that is not kept at the units, and McIntyre certainly is where our aviation is, is centered out of, both our, our air wing, the 169th fighter wing, and then our Army aviation, although we do have aviation assets located in the upper part of the state in, in Greenville. Um, one of the high-profile uh, pieces of work of the National Guard in the past year was the response down in Conway during the flooding. Yes. Uh, We have worked hard over the years to ensure the balance of the force structure in South Carolina allows us to perform both our federal mission and our state mission. We are obviously a hurricane state, so we have looked to ensure that our force structure is not only uh, in South Carolina, but we have it postured, ready to meet those challenges. We feel comfortable that we have the resources to meet what we see as most of our challenges as it relates to the, our hurricanes. However, there is a uh, process in place that we can EMAC through uh, process to gain troop support out of other states and then we can always as we were prepared to do during Hurricane Florence through the dual status command bringing on Title 10 forces to help supplement and augment the forces in South Carolina. But We stand ready to meet both the hurricane issues that we have and the winter storm type issues and uh, I feel confident we're ready. Is there any plans for a push to get more funding for armory investment Uh, when General Livingston first came on board, that was one of his priorities, and that will continue to be one of our priorities. He has uh, been very forthright with the General Assembly and what our needs are. We've done an assessment of all our facilities to determine what, what we would call our deferred maintenance on those facilities are. Uh, we will, again, this year in the, in the legislative budget process, uh, look to come back to the General Assembly. We use both state and federal funds to uh, maintain most of our facilities around the state. We do have a limited number of those that are on federal properties that are maintained solely with federal dollars, but most of them have to be met on a 50-50 basis with state dollars. And we have been fortunate in the past few years to get monies to help us in that regard. Our capacity to uh, award contracts, monitor contracts, is generally around $10 million worth of expenditure annually. And we have worked to ensure that the state dollars coming in would be available to match our federal dollars, and that continues to be an effort that we have. General, how excited are you to step into this role and step into the big shoes left by General as well, and then talk about you know the things that you're looking forward to most? Well, I had the pleasure of serving with uh, Major General Livingston uh, in Afghanistan back in 2007, 2008. I had just recently come back from a deployment and in Iraq and uh, led the 1st of the 178th Field Artillery Battalion there and it was probably, well not, not a doubt, it was the greatest honor I've had which we have served with that, with that unit as their commander. Uh, but serving for General Livingston has been a pleasure. He is a leader who is visionary. He is a leader who has set the, the tone for where he wanted to see the, the agency go and I've had an opportunity to mentor under his leadership and, I've, and I've, I really appreciate how both he and Ms. Barbara have worked as a team. Uh, we, we talk about we're a family, and it's more than just talk. Uh, when you do the business that we do, and we send our soldiers and airmen into harm's, harm's way, um, there is a tremendous sacrifice there. And we work hard to ensure that our, our soldiers, airmen, and their families are taken care of. And I, uh, as I said earlier, I enjoy soldiering. I uh, served on active duty for a few years, uh, came back and joined the Guard, worked for the Department of Natural Resources. I don't know anything but wear a uniform, whether it was DNR green or, or Army greens, and I enjoy each and every day 
And I look forward to every morning when I get up going to uh, be with some of the, of the greatest people I've ever had around me. Any more questions? Well, let me introduce the rest of this family. Barbara and Susan, if you find your respective spouse. This is what makes it work right here. This is why we do it. Why we do what we do. Okay, then. Y'all, thank you very much. All right. Thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.